Okay, year nine, year RE lesson today. We're going to continue our module of suffering. So last time we did a lesson looking at the difference uh, between uh, natural and moral suffering. So that difference between suffering caused by nature and suffering caused by humans and what the difference of them was uh, and how we can differentiate between the two. Today we're going to look at why suffering sort of exists and can we use suffering as an argument to disprove the idea of there being a God? The idea that because suffering exists, there cannot be a God is quite a common one used by non-believers or people questioning the religious faith. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze, can it be used to discredit the idea of God? And what arguments do religious people think? mostly Christians, but we also look at some other religions, what arguments do they use to uh, refute or to disagree with that argument that suffering means there cannot be a God? So at the top, there is your title, Why Do People Suffer? And Can Suffering Be Used as an Argument Against God? And at the bottom, there are three tasks. Do your challenge level. So red is the easiest, orange is the middle, and green is the hardest. Not be the same for every task today. You can just do the red if you find the others too difficult. Um, but try and have a go uh, at that. Write down that, that uh, title. Your date today is Thursday, the 28th of January. Underline it and then maybe write some thoughts down to do that first starter and then we'll get going. So pause the video and uh, have a go at that for me, please. Right, there's some words you've got to know today or you're not going to understand what's going on. At the top are words which are all used to describe God. And in most religions, they all apply, but specifically uh, Christianity. God is described, and I will pronounce them all for you, omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent, uh, apologies, and omnipresent. So these are words which describe what god is and what god can do to christians the word omni just means all uh and then potent is powerful uh science is knowing benevolent is loving and present means present so all four of those words god is completely powerful he can do anything he is all powerful he is omniscient he can he knows everything which has ever happened and ever will happen he's omnibenevolent everything he does is for love and finally, he is everywhere at the same time. Those four terms all are used by Christians to describe the power of their God. So if you could make a note of all four, please be careful with the uh, spellings and also get the definitions. Because I'm going to use those words throughout today's lesson. And you need to understand what they all mean. So pause the video and make a note of it, please. Right. I am going to link this uh, BBC Clips video into the task. So in a second, you go back to Firefly and click on the link, which will be embedded in. And you're going to answer some of the questions. Now, again, it's challenge level. So red is the easiest, orange, the middle, and green is the toughest. If you just want to do the red, that is fine. I would encourage you to attempt some of the, the orange and maybe get onto some green. Um, but what kind of disasters are natural? Why do people doubt God after disasters? And how do atheists explain suffering? So you're going to watch the video and then you're going to uh, answer those questions. Uh, you can be doing this on paper or in, in your OneNote. It's up to you. But if you are doing it on paper, either upload it to your one note or send it to me on firefly attach it to the task uh and then we'll carry on so pause the video and have a go at watching that and then answer those questions for me please your next uh task folks is going to be um uh, you're going to have this sheet which has been sent to you it's attached to the firefly task and what you're going to do is there are one two three four five six seven arguments about this issue what we're looking at now is the argument that if god is truly omnipotent omniscient omnibenevolent and omnipresent why would he allow suffering to happen if he is powerful he is powerful enough to stop suffering if he is all-knowing he knows suffering has happened if he is all loving he only wants to love and have good things happen and if he is present he is everywhere so if all these things are true why are there why is there suffering like the stuff we looked at last lesson both natural and moral and this is a massive massive argument between religious people and non-religious people um 
it's it's very very it's been raging and and debated for centuries or millennia thousands of years and you know the debate still exists we're never going to get to a point where there's an agreement but you've got to understand both sides of the argument so what's going to happen is on the left uh, of the sheet you're going to have is going to be the arguments that christians offer um in response so someone will say to a christian how can your god who is omnibenevolent on the omni omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. How can he allow suffering? And they have these arguments. Free will, it's a test, original sin, it's the devil, it's part of God's plan. And uh, whilst not in Christianity, in Hinduism and Buddhism, you'll get the argument of karma uh, to explain suffering. So these are all arguments about why suffering happens when, if you believe in God. How do you explain suffering if you believe in an om om omnipresent and omnipotent God? What you need to do is read each box, write down the title, so you'll write free will, and this will be sent to you, so you'll be able to read it and zoom in. And then you need to read the information and summarize it into one sentence. And this is a key part of note-taking. Just take it and like write, what does it say, but much shorter. Just don't get it all. Summarize if you're telling a five-year-old what is the argument of free will about? What is the argument of it's a test about? What is the argument of original sin about? Summarize it. Once you've summarized each, well, once you've summarized the first one, you then need to write down if you agree with it. So once you've summarized and you understand the argument of free will, you then need to write down, I agree with this or I disagree and explain why. If you want to go for the tougher task, you're going to analyze the strengths and limitations. So strengths, in what way does it sound like it could be true? And limitations, what arguments could you make against it? So that's not just saying I agree or I disagree. It's recognizing that all the arguments have pros and cons, but also saying what, what side of the argument you fall down on. Do you actually agree or disagree with it? The last argument is the atheist argument that there is no God. So it's like you've got the six religious arguments saying it's free will or it's original sin. And then you have the atheist argument, which basically says there isn't a God. Suffering just happens because there's no God to control it. And you've got to make a note on that and say whether you agree or disagree. So your task here summarize each argument into a sentence say whether you agree or disagree with it and if you want to and if you can analyze the strengths and limitations of the argument um so that's a fairly simple task and it should give you a nice understanding of the arguments for and against uh, the existence of suffering if god truly exists and remember in this re course i'm not approaching it from um a a a a um, either an atheist standpoint or a religious believer i am just um exposing you to the arguments and the ideas and allowing you to to, to grapple with it and come up to your own conclusions i i it doesn't really matter uh which way uh, i believe or or the way i present it i'm just presenting the arguments for you, to you so you can grapple with it and come up to your own conclusions so again we've got to keep those words in our mind because that's how god is described and if you describe like that it's very difficult to justify suffering but christians and hindus and muslim um, hindus and buddhists and muslims do try and do so so finally i want you to answer this question does suff suffering prove that god does not exist uh and it says 12 marks you probably won't get 12 marks out of it now if i would aim for this one so uh, you just explain the key arguments one way or the other um, I want you to do at least a paragraph saying it does prove that God doesn't exist and then a paragraph saying, no, God can still exist with suffering. And there's a structure down here, a point, evidence and explanation, uh, which I would like you to follow. And you're going to write that on your paper. So at least two paragraphs, same for maybe three, if you want to do two for one side and one for the other. But you need to engage with both sides of a debate and then tell me what your view is. So to summarize keywords, videos and questions, summarizing the argument and saying whether you agree or disagree, and then writing that answer out. You're then going to have, if you've done it on OneNote, great, I can see it on there. If you haven't done it on OneNote, you have a need to then put your screenshot or your photo of your work in your OneNote, in your class notes, or attach it to this task, and that's how you get it to. If it's not attached, I'll assume you haven't done it. That concludes today's lesson. If you need me, my email is jbaker at trentonacademy.co.uk and you can ask for any help on there. Otherwise, thank you for watching and good luck with the work.